Voice in the Night, a musical mystery story starring the internationally famous stage, screen, and supper club star, Carl Brisson. Oh, I bring a little white gardenia as a flushing as a day in May. You may wear it if you care, or toss it away. Tonight we have a ringside table at the newest nightclub in town, the Golden Oreo. The lights are low, the music's soft, the audience hushes as into the spotlight steps the proprietor, a debonair gentleman whose sport is melody and mysterious adventure, played by that great entertainer, Carl Brisson. <laughs> Thank you. And now, as you all know, at the Golden Oreo, we always start our show with a request number. And the lady and gentleman here in front of me have asked me to sing a song, which I was lucky enough to introduce for the first time on any stage in the world. It became perhaps one of the greatest successes of our time. I'm sure you know it, because it goes like this. There's a garden, what a garden, only happy faces bloom there, and there's never any room there, or a worry, or a gloom there, and there's music, and there's dancing, and there's lots of sweet romancing, when they play the polka, they all get in the swing, every time they play that rum bum ba Everybody feels so sorry alarm They want to throw their cares away They all go yachty And then they hear a rumble on the floor Why it's the big surprise they're waiting for Then all the couples form a ring For miles around you hear them sing Roll out the barrel, we'll have a barrel of fun. Roll out the barrel, we'll have the blues on the run. Sing, boom, tra-da-da, ring out the song of the cheer. Now it's time to roll the barrel, cause the gang's fall. Thank you, everybody. I'll be back in a moment to sing some more for you. But for now, here's your chance to dance your troubles away. My spoon, some more little thing music. If you please. Oh, Mr. Brisson. Yes, Henry. Miss Tony Wells, the columnist, would like you to join her at table 26. Tony Wells, but well, I'll be delighted. Oh, hello there, Tony. Hello, Carl. Say, Carl, you know a lot of people. Do you know anyone who has an apartment for rent? Gee, Tony, I don't. But I certainly hope you have an easier time to find a place to live in than I did. It almost killed me. Oh, well, tell me about it. At least it'll be a story without any murders in it. <laughs> That's where you're wrong. Very wrong. I call the story the case of the worried detective. <laughs> and believe me, I wasn't worried about finding a place to live in either. I was worried for fear I was going to find a place to die. Goodness, it sounds exciting. Let's hear it. Well, this wasn't so very long ago, Tony. I had just gotten back to New York from an engagement in Chicago. And I was having a little trouble getting a hotel room. And I do mean trouble. Oh, excuse me, young man. You're the room clerk, aren't you? Yes, that's right. Uh, my name is Brisson, uh, Carl Brisson. I hope you have heard of me. Oh, of course I've heard of you. I placed you by your accent immediately. You're that new long-distance runner from Sweden, aren't you? Uh, but, <laughs> well, no. Uh, yeah. As a matter of fact, I'm a long-distance singer from Denmark. You know, uh, oh, I bring a little five garden. Uh, that one, you know that. Oh, I sing. <laughs> I'm very sorry we haven't a room in the house. Huh? 
Not even if I promise not to sing in it? Sorry, try us again in about uh, six weeks. Mm. You don't mind if I wait, do you? Just in case something should turn up. Well, if you wish to, just wait over there, please. Sorry, not a thing in the house. Sorry, everything's reserved until September. <laughs> So I waited, and while I was waiting, something was happening that I didn't know about yet. It was happening at a very attractive house on the edge of a little lake, hidden deep in the woods, only a short ways from New York. Nick, Nick, get up quick! Something's happened. Something terrible's happened. What do you mean? What's wrong? It's Charlie, Nick, you better come see for yourself. All right, I will. This way, Nick. He's in his room here, across the hall from me. Yes, Charlie. He's hanging from the chandelier with his own bathrobe cord around his neck. He's killed himself. Killed himself? Look at that bruise on his forehead. Bruise? Oh, yeah, yeah. Just like he was knocked out with a blackjack. Exactly. He was knocked out and then hanged. This isn't suicide. This is murder. It was getting late in the afternoon, and I was still waiting in the hotel lobby when I heard myself being paid. Call for Mr. Breeson. Call for Mr. Breeson. Here, yeah, boy. Is the room clerk looking for me? I hope he is. Oh, no, sir. It's a lady. Here she comes now. Oh, thank you, boy. Oh, call. Call, Breeson. <laughs> well, <laughs> how do you do? Oh, Carl, I'm so glad I found you. Don't mind if I call you Carl, do you? I should say not, uh... If you tell me who you are... Oh, oh, of course. My name's Gloria Venning. How do you do? We've never met, but I've heard you sing so often. I feel as if we're old friends. Oh, I feel as if we're going to be old friends. <laughs> I hope so. I've had such a hard time finding you. I know it's presumptuous of me, but I've come to ask a favor of you, Carl. Yes? I want you to investigate a murder. Investigate a murder? For you? Not for me, really, but for my uncle, Nicholas Venning. He's heard of the cases you've solved, and Carl, he'll pay $5,000 for your assistance. $5,000? Oh, no, but I can't. I, I open an engagement tomorrow, and I've got to find a place to stay. But by tomorrow, you'd have the case solved. All you'd have to do is stay overnight. I'm sorry, my and... dear, but I... Stay overnight? You mean you have a room for me? Of course I'll help you. Boy, my bags. <laughs> And so an hour later, we were driving along a narrow road, deep in the woods. But, Gloria, why did your uncle want me to solve the murder? Why not just call the police? Well, you see, Carl, uncle and several of his business associates are, well, uh, well you might say they're hiding out at uncle's country place. <laughs> hiding out? Well, that's a funny way to put it. <laughs> well, I mean, they're, they're just planning a big financial deal, and any publicity now would ruin everything. Mm -hmm. Oh, look, there's the house. There at the edge of the lake. Say, that's nice. And so close to New York. I didn't know you could be so private this close to the city. Oh, Uncle's very clever at finding hideouts like oh, this. Like there he is, waiting for us. Oh. I'll introduce you to him. Thank you. Uncle! Uncle, this is Carl Brisson. Carl, my Uncle Nicholas Venning. How do you do, Mr. Brisson? This is a great pleasure. How do you do, Mr. Venning? Please and here you. comes my business associate. Right, 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 Nicholas right. Venning, Nicholas Venning. Where well, have I heard a name like that before? Boys, I want you to meet Carl Brisson. Carl Lefty Winners. Hiya, Carl. Maxie Benson. It's mutual. Finger by face. Pleased to meet you, Carl. And Whisper Anderson. Track and double check. And then it came to me. Why, you're the marble. That's was... right, Carl. It was us who knocked over that bank in Pittsburgh last week for three hundred and eighty thousand dollars, not down the silver. And now come inside and be comfortable. Welcome to Happiness Manor. Thank you. <laughs> Now, Carl, sit down and be comfortable. <laughs> yes, but I really... I have some important business in New York. I'd forgotten all about her. Uh, I mean, uh, about it. And, uh... But, Carl, you promised you'd help us out. Yes, I know, but... Of course but... he's going to stay. Lefty, bring Carl a handful of cigars. Yeah, boys, right away. But really, I, I don't smoke cigars. You'll smoke these and like them. Here you are, Carl. Fill your pockets. Well... Well, thanks. Maybe Carl would like a drink. Good idea. Mm. Think I'd bring a bottle of brandy. Mm -hmm. And Maxie, fix a pillow behind Carl's back so he'll be real comfortable. Okay. But, I, but I am comfortable. You'll be more comfortable with a pillow. Yeah, here you are, Carl. <laughs> there. Just the way me old mother used to like it. I'm not anybody's mother. 
But, Carl, we do want you to feel right at home. Uh, Pour Carl a glass, and Maxie, light a cigar. Right, boss, right. <laughs> hey, uh, Carl, this is Happiness Manor. We want you to be happy. Don't we, Gloria? Of course we do, Carl, and, and Mickey wants somebody to be happy. They're happy. I see what you mean, Gloria. Well, all right, Mickey, I guess we might as well get down to business. Gloria did say something about a murder. That's right. Last night, somebody here bumped off Charlie King, my best trigger man. Oh. Why, well, I'd have trusted these boys any place until this happened. Mm, I, that must have been a shock to you, Mr. Nick. Yeah. And now one of us is a murderer. Mm. So we took a vote this morning, Carl, and decided to send for you. We couldn't call in the cops. That wouldn't be practical. No, no, no. no, no, no. no. Well, no, I understand your problem, Nick. But I don't believe I can help you. I... Well, it's just that I... see. I... You're worrying about your money. Whisper, hand me the satchel. Shut. Hey, you are, boss. Now, look, Carl. See? Almost 400 grand. Ooh, that's a lot of money. So just name your price. Five grand? Here you are. Go on, take it. No, I just couldn't. You see... Uh... Oh, it's not enough. All right, here's ten grand. No, I mean... Uh, well, you see, it's stolen money. And stolen I... money? Oh, now I get you. You mean it's hot money, and maybe the serial numbers are listed. That's very smart, Carl. But you can pass this any place. Go on, take it. It's enough, ain't it? Well, oh, I'm sure it is. Isn't it, Carl? What, lawyer? Oh, yes, yes, sure it is, Nick. That's sure. fine. Now we can get started. <laughs> Charlie's still hanging in the blue room. He'll go there. Of course. And... Go on with Whisper. Huh? What is it, Whisper? What's wrong? I just see the take his face from his pocket neck, and then he stopped oh, choking like that. Oh, boss, my throat. I can't breathe. He's passed out. Let me look at him. Oh, he's not, he's not dead. I'm afraid he is. And in that case, Carl, we're going to have to raise your fee. Because now you've got two murders to solve. And I want them solved in a hurry. <laughs> So there I was, Tony, right in the middle of the toughest mob of pucks in the country with two murders to solve. And everybody in the house a suspect. And if I didn't solve them, well, I, I knew Nigga was going to be very annoyed. Oh, what did you do? How, how did you solve them? Well, you see, Tony, Excuse I... Excuse me, Mr. Brace, huh? but you're on that. Oh, thank you. Sorry, Tony, but I have to see now. It comes with the cover shot, you know. But in just one moment, I'll tell you everything. <laughs> thank you, Thank you, everybody. Thank you. And now we have come, ladies and gentlemen, to a man's time at the Golden Oriole. Yes? Bye-bye, Blackbird. Bye-bye, Blackbird. Oh, I wish I could. But I can, however, sing about another bird. The Nightingale of Barclay Square. Oh, I love that. I made the right. I made the wrong. But I'm perfectly willing to swear That when you turn and smile at me A nightingale sang in Barclay Square When two lovers meet in Mayfair So the legends tell Some birds sing when the turns to spring Every winding street in Mayfair Falls beneath its bell and I know such enchantment can be Cause it happened one evening to me How strange it was How sweet and strange There was never a dream to compare With that crazy, crazy night we met But a nightingale sang in Barclay Square Heart of mine, be loud and fast, like a merry-go-round in a fair. Oh, we were dancing cheek to cheek, and the nightingale sang in Barclay Square. The moon that lingered over London town, to a puzzled moon, or he wore a frown. How could he know we two were so in love? The whole darn world seem upside down. The streets of town were paved with stars. 
it was such a romantic affair And light and echo far away And nightingale sang in Barclay's where I know cause I was there That night in Barclay's I'll be back to sing some more for you. But now, ladies and gentlemen, the floor is yours, so why not face the music and dance? And now, Tony, I'll tell you the rest of the story. Uh, now, where did I stop? Well, you just reached Happiness Manor and found yourself in the middle of Nicky Venn's gang, expected to solve two murders. Oh, yes, that's it. But this was one time I didn't want to find a murder. You didn't? Uh, why not? Well, Tony, as soon as I did, he'd probably kill me, too. So I kept stoning as long as I could. But after dinner, which Gloria cooked, oh, yes, uh, she could cook too, <laughs> Nicky began to get impatient. Well, Carl, I suppose you're pretty anxious to begin detecting now. To begin detecting? Uh, oh, yes, I'm very anxious. I expect you're going to need a microscope like detectors always do, huh? A microscope? You bet, <laughs> your micro... Say, I forgot to bring my microscope. That means we'll have to wait till tomorrow when I can go into the city for it, and... Uh, I was afraid of that, Carl, so I had Gloria buy a microscope this afternoon. Oh. Well, that's, uh, <laughs> very nice. Uh, you. Gloria, oh, Gloria. Yeah, Nick? Uh, Carl's gonna start detecting now. Bring the microscope into the blue room. <laughs> So we all went into the blue room, and there was poor Charlie, still hanging from the chandelier by the court of his dressing gown. The room was all in blue. And Charlie's face was pretty blue, too. Well, there he is, Carl. Just like we found him this morning. Yeah, there he is. Now, let's see how a real detective solves a murder. What did you do first? First? Oh, well, I guess I'd better inspect the knot first. Hey, give Carl the microscope, Gloria. Here it is, Carl. I hope it's thick enough. Oh, oh thick enough. Oh, yes, this is fine. Uh, now, let's see. Uh, yes, let's have a... Hmm. Yeah. Say, Gloria. Huh? You know uh, shorthand? Yeah, Carl, if you don't go too fast. Oh, I won't. Don't worry. Uh, I'll take this down, will you? All right, Carl. Here, I have a pencil and some paper. Go ahead. Uh, news tied with slip knot, left hand twist. Slip knot, left hand twist. Feet... Eighteen inches from floor. Eighteen inches from floor. Uh, victim dead. Full stop. Hmm. So that's how a real detective works. Imagine that. Nick, I don't like to be watched. I like to be left alone now, except for Gloria to take notes, of course. Huh? Oh, sure, sure. All right, boys, outside. Anything you say, boys. Okay, Carl, I'll leave you alone now. Thank if you, you want anything, just yell. You bet I will. Whew. Well, I fooled Nick so far, but I can't do it forever. Hold him. What do you mean, Carl? Well, all this stuff, Gloria, I'm just making believe. You mean you won't be able to find out who killed him? Uh, maybe I could, but not this way. Anyway, I don't want to know. If I find out, maybe the same fellow will kill me. Well, I'm sorry I ever got you into this. I, I never would have done it, except I'm scared to death of Nick. Well, I know exactly what you mean. If you could only get away from him somehow. Gloria, if you really mean it, Maybe we can get away together. I do mean it, Carl. Just tell me what to do. Well, the window's open, and we're alone. Mm -hmm. If we could only get out into those woods, they'd never find us. What's your idea? I'll step the screen up and see if everything is clear outside. Here it goes. Mm -hmm. It's pretty dark outside, but the trees are only a few feet Hello, away. Hello, Carl. Oh, uh... <laughs> <laughs> You're getting a breath of fresh air. <laughs> Hello there, Maxie. <laughs> yes, I'm just getting a... Yeah, a little air. Well, I, I guess I better go back to work. Yeah, it's a good idea. Max is on guard outside the window, so we can't escape. Oh, it's all my fault that you're here. Oh, Gloria, Gloria, <laughs> please, you mustn't cry. By morning, I'll think of something. But, Carl, don't you understand? As soon as you've solved the case, Nick's going to kill you. Kill me? Oh, I don't like that. Oh, the boys, you couldn't risk letting you go again. Well, he's going to kill me if I solve the case. And if I don't solve it, he'll kill me anyway. 
Well, I'm beginning not to like Nick. Oh, please forgive me for getting you into this. Of course, I'll forgive you, Gloria. And you know? Yes. Crime makes your eyes shine just like stars. In fact, our Gloria. That's it. What is Carl? Looking into your eyes has given me an idea. Huh? A very good idea. Let's call Nick and tell him I've solved the case. <laughs> So I told Nick I'd uncovered the murderer, and we all gathered in the living room with poor Charlie, the guest of honor, sitting in a big chair where nobody could help looking at him. All right, Carl, we're all here. Uh, fine. Now, uh, now Charlie's going to tell us something with his eyes. The name of his murderer. What do you mean, Carl? You've heard of ladies talking with their eyes, haven't you? Well, sometimes murder victims do, too. The last thing they see when they're dying photographs itself on their eyes and stays there. You mean Charlie's eyes photograph the guy who killed him? Say, I, I heard of that, but I never believed him. Me neither. It doesn't happen very often, you know, but this time it has. The image is very faint. You have to use the microscope to see it. Well, then let's take a look. We want to know who the guilty guy is. Well, you won't be able to see anything as long as the lights are on. You'll have to turn them out and hold a lighted match right in front of Charlie's eyes when you look. Carl, you wouldn't be kidding us, of would you? Of course not. Turn out the lights and take a look. That's all I ask. I say let's try it. Sure, it won't hurt none to try. Well, all right, give me the microscope. There Carl. you are, my friend. Now, turn out the light, Maria. Okay, Nick. Yeah, it's plenty dark now. Light a match, Maxie. Sure, Nick. There you are. Now, let's see if Carl's kidding us. Gee, his eyes sure do shine. He's looking right at us. Hey, what do you see, Nick? He's taking an awful long look. Hey, the match is going out. Wait, I'll light another. Ah, don't bother. There's nothing there. Nothing there? What Carl said... I you... know what Carl said, but it was just a gag. How could Charlie have photographed his killer with his eyes when he was killed in the dark? What was that you said, Nick? Yeah, how do you know he's killed in the dark? because you killed him, is it, Nick? Of course I didn't kill him, you dopes. Stand back. Stand back. Hey, hey, quick. Turn on the light, somebody. Here, I got the light. There. Nick's dead. We got him. He's dead, all right. He's gun in his hand. It was him bumping us off so he could hold all the dough. Yeah, well, we fixed him. Now to take care of Brisson. All right, free son. Hey, he's gone. Yeah, he's gone. And Gloria's gone with him. Yeah, they sneaked out while the lights were out. The doe's gone, too. They took it with him. Hey, we gotta catch him. No, we'd never find him in these woods. Come on, we've gotta get going. The cops will be here inside half an hour. All right, Gloria. They're gone. You can come out now at the closet. Oh, good. Oh, he killed Nick. Yes, I thought he was the one. Well, I guess he deserves what he got. Oh, Carl, it was so clever of you to get them to turn out the lights so we could hide in the closet. And it all came from looking into your eyes. Maybe if I look some more, I'll get some more good ideas, huh? When you look at me that way, Carl, I begin to get ideas myself. Ideas like this. Hey, I... I like that kind of, uh, lawyer. I've got to make a phone call. Huh? Oh, of course you want to warn the sheriff about seeing her in a plane. No, that comes next. Operator. Operator. But, Carl, who are you calling that's more important than the sheriff? The real estate agents. This house has just been vacated, and I'm going to rent it. <laughs> And so, Tony, that's the case of the worried detective. And I was worried, believe me. Mm -hmm. But it came out all right in the end. Yes? I got a house that I was able to pay for an apartment in town. And Maxie, Lefty, and Finger got accommodations, too. Oh? <laughs> in Atlanta Penitentiary for life. Oh, I see. And what did Gloria get? Oh, Gloria, well, she got a South American millionaire. No. She married him and went to live in Rio de Janeiro. <laughs> Carl, are you sure you haven't exaggerated any place in the story? Not even a little bit? Exaggerated? Mm. If you think I've exaggerated, Tony, yes, Carl. you wait until you start trying to find out your find your new apartment, and you'll see. <laughs> uh, no, excuse me, Tony, but I have to go on and sing again. My orchestra's going on the air right away, and I promise the boys to sing a song with them. Then I'll be back and drive you right home, then. <laughs>
You have been listening to A Voice in the Night, starring the internationally famous entertainer Carl Brisson. Next week at this time, over most of these mutual stations, Carl Brisson returns to entertain you with music and mysterious adventure in the case of the Restless Skeleton. A Voice in the Night is written by Bob Arthur and David Kogan and produced by Roger Bauer. The orchestra is under the direction of Emerson Buckley. Ted Brown speaking. This program was heard in Canada over the facilities of the Canadian Broadcasting System. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. You will only sing muggadilly muggadilly muggadai. So let us all then get told to the twenty love more. Come and pick and tell